DMEC in eyes with ACI wells is a complicated topic. There are a lot of people who think that these eyes are more suited for DSEC because the eye is so complex. Often these are eyes that are sick. They've had an unplanned prior vitrectomy. They may have glaucoma, iris defects, other things wrong with them. But actually, I think that DMEC is surprisingly possible and fun and rewarding in these cases. It's a better operation than DSEC for all of the normal reasons that DMEC is a better operation than DSEC. And the operation is usually surprisingly quick and easy. This is a case that we did just a few days ago. This is an eye with an ACI well from prior complicated cataract surgery. And I want to walk you through the surgery and show you how it can be done safely and simply and quickly and easily. So here we are on the operating room table. I'm administering my preferred means of anesthesia, which is a subconjunctival injection. The solution we're using to provide anesthesia is a medication that I'm recently learning more about. It's called Expirel. It's liposomal bupivacaine. It's a subtenons block that lasts three days. So it keeps the eye comfortably numb for three days after the procedure. I really like that because it keeps my patients a lot more comfortable than they would otherwise be. After that anesthetic is administered, I'm making a few paracentesis here with a 15 degree blade. And then once that is done, I will make a main wound, in this case superiorly, directly at 12 o'clock with a 2.4 millimeter keratome. After I do that, then I will perform my decimeterexis per usual, which is under air. I do that with the assistance of an AC maintainer. You'll notice here I'm going to insinuate an AC maintainer into the eye. And first I'm just making a little inferior iridotomy with a vitrectomy handpiece. So this is an AC maintainer. It's 23 gauge and that keeps the anterior chamber formed with air during a decimeterexis. It really helps me with stability during my scoring and stripping. So this is an inverted Sinsky hook and I'm just scoring the back of the cornea and then I will peel towards the center to liberate this decimase membrane as a single sheet. I'm fast forwarding through all this because this is all completely normal and standard and everyone who's done DMEC is familiar with these manipulations. So we'll fast forward to the good part. And the good part is putting the DMEC graft into the eye. So here we are, I've got the anterior chamber now reformed with balanced salt solution. You'll notice there's some air that's sort of peeking out from behind the iris underneath that ACIOL. This is extremely common when you're working on a post vitrectomy eye, especially one with an iris defect or an ACIOL. Air can sneak back behind the iris. This can complicate the surgery. And so it's something to be sort of aware of going into the DMET graft unfolding operation. I'm hydrating the wounds. And the reason I'm hydrating the wound before I inject the graft is it's critically important in these vaguely unicameral eyes, this eye, which is post vitrectomy with a large iris defect, that you don't have a hypotenuse soft eye that would cause the graft to get sucked down into the posterior segment. So you want to be absolutely sure that the wounds are not leaking so the eye is not going to soften up after you inject the graft. So once I've verified that, now I'm getting ready to put the graft into the eye. So here we are injecting it through this superior 2.4 millimeter incision via this is a glass dork cannula. It's my preferred means for injecting a graft because it delivers the minimum bolus of fluid into the eye along with the DMEC tissue. And here I'm going to pause the video to give you sort of a little bit of a theoretical explanation on what's going on and what there is to do. So you'll notice that the graft is trapped there in the main wound. It's pinned in the primary incision. So it's not free to move around inside the eye. That was not intentional, but when I delivered this graft into the eye, because it's a large graft, that happens sometimes. This graft is nine millimeters in size. And I like using a large graft because the larger the graft, the easier it is to unfold if you have a deep chamber or a hyper deep chamber because you can get interaction between the edges of the graft and the angle, the periphery where the cornea and the iris meet. 
that's where the chamber is shallowest and you are most likely to interact with that part of the eye if you have a large graft that occupies a large amount of space in the eye. A small graft which floats around in the center in the deepest part of the chamber, you have more difficulty unfolding. So a large graft is useful. Now you'll notice also there's an air bubble that was injected along with the graft. This bubble has to be removed before you can substantially unfold the tissue because otherwise that bubble competes for control over the tissue. So the first step always when injecting a tissue is to remove the bubble. So we'll play the video, okay? So now I'm going to remove that little air bubble and I'm gonna sweep the graft out of where it is incarcerated in the primary incision. So I'm pushing it up inside the eye and now it still looks like it may be kinked a bit. Maybe the graft is still interacting with that wound some. So I'm just pushing the graft around a little bit until I can verify that the graft is no longer stuck there inside the main wound. So a few more little manipulations and now it looks free. Okay. <clears throat> so now, what is the next step? I'll pause the video again here. Okay. In evaluating this eye, it may be difficult somewhat to understand from this two-dimensional image, but the, the curl of the graft appears to me on this side over here to the left to be right side up. In other words, the Motsuro sign would be positive. Okay. The graft is curling up. And if so, that means the graft is right side up already. Now, conventionally, you would unfold this graft by shallowing the chamber and placing taps on the corneal surface, but you can't shallow this chamber. This is basically a unicameral eye. It's a hyper deep chamber. So there's no amount of burping or decompressing a wound that will shallow this chamber. The ACIOL also holds everything down and back. You would think that an eye with an ACIOL would have cramped confines with a shallow anterior chamber, but it's the opposite. This is a hyper deep, impossible to shallow chamber. So you cannot unfold this graft by shallowing the chamber, by burping the wound. You need another strategy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a coaxial forcep through a paracentesis snuck in through the side to grab the edge of this graft, which I think is properly right side up. Now, because my paracentesis is a little on the small side, I'm having some trouble finagling it into the eye. So here I will come out again and I'll try again to grab the edge of the graft. And now I've got it and I'm dragging the graft centrally. And with some taps on the surface of the eye, you'll notice how easily the graft unfolds. And after basically just 10 seconds of manipulation, you'll notice the graft is now completely entirely unfolded in the anterior chamber. And all that remains now to do is to put an air bubble underneath the graft and lift it. Now this is a big graft. And so you can see I'm having to sort of sneak the cannula in around the side to get the cannula underneath the edge of the graft so I don't inject air into the interface. And this takes a little exploring. I'm trying different pairs and TCs to find a vantage point where I can get up underneath the graft with an air bubble. But eventually I find a spot where there's a little bit of separation between the corneal periphery and the edge of the graft. Here I am sneaking up underneath it and I'll put an air bubble in the anterior chamber and pressurize the eye. And this is the end of the surgery. And what I want to impress upon you is how shockingly simple this was to unfold a DMAC graft in an eye that's post vitrectomy with a hyper deep chamber and an ACIOL. And the thing that made it easy actually is just theoretical knowledge of how these grafts should be handled. And that is to say that unfolding should proceed not by shallowing the chamber, but rather by directly manipulating the tissue, by grabbing the tissue with coaxial forceps and dragging it to the side. And by moving the tissue in the eye, as opposed to collapsing the structure of the eye, you'll find that it's much easier to open these tissues. Now, I myself, usually when encountering an ACIOL in the eye, 
I often remove it at the time of DMEX surgery and replace that lens with a scleral fixated lens, a Yamani or a glued lens or something like this. And the decision to leave the lens in place versus to replace it, I think depends on whether or not you think the ACIOL is to blame for the corneal endothelial decompensation. Often you will see an eye that's had a complicated surgery and that's why there's an ACIOL and that initial complicated surgery is to blame for the cornea crumping. And in those people, you may as well leave the ACIOL because probably it's a bystander and not the culprit per se. In other people that have an ACIOL in which there is not quite that history of a complicated primary surgery, you really think that the ACIOL was to blame. And in those people, I do tend to remove the ACIOL at the time of DMAC surgery. So I think you can do it both ways. You can leave the lens or you can remove it. You can replace it or not. But whichever you do, I think the endothelial procedure of choice should be DMEC. And if you're afraid to do DMEC in these complicated cases, you shouldn't be because it's one of the most fun, enjoyable, interesting cases you may undertake. Thank you so much.